and with uh, with camera smile for you camera ah <laughs> uh, this your camera no no it's here the camera is here oh this is working good you have to shift this to make your face small and make the rest of it Right. Yeah, you want to point it at the screen? Yeah, the screen should be on. Okay. Try and see. Do all that. That's fine. So now, I don't know where. Where's that? How change this from the screen to? So, so we, do you want to point it at the presentation? Yeah, yeah. Because you need to scope it up a little. Yeah. 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 So it's an inverted image. Yeah, it's an inverted image. Hello. It's stock prediction. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. Okay. okay. So the model that the project that I've chosen for uh, for this program is stock prediction, mainly again because I'm in finance. So just a quick background to some of the new folks here is I didn't have any knowledge of computer science, so. All I learned is here, so I didn't know anything about Python, computer science, coding, nothing. So I did the uh, foundation, and then I did the data science, right? So I took stock prediction because I'm going to be working. I'm going to be using this on numbers. So, um, so as you, as we go forward, you'll see that how it's really important to choose a project that you are going to be using uh, later on, right? Otherwise, it's it's too vast a topic. Otherwise. So let's start. So my project overview is again is from Kaggle. It's a, a data a data set provider. You get used to it. So I've got the NYSE stock prices for various listed companies uh, from 2008 to 2016. Right. I also have financial information for each of these companies. That is what's filed by each company in uh, in, in the SEC equivalent to SEBI here. And then you have the overall performance. So the first two are one data set. I thought I'd make this more complicated and more interactive. So the second two is the overall performance of NYSE uh, based on the country's performance and the news headlines which drives that overall. So that means if they say China's doing well, not going well, can I predict how that impacts the overall US economy and whether it will go up or down? And then get that going up or down into my uh, model and see how that affects a particular companies. Company isolated will not help because it's market perception. So you also have to factor that in. So those are the, those are the things we attempted. Some of it we succeeded, some of it I'll walk you through where I need to uh, work on further. So the first thing is take a model using machine learning and deep learning algorithm to predict stock movement. That's just the basic set. So, so that's your basic structure so this is when you start adding um, you know when you start creating a model and projects you need to have one core place that you that's your core right this is my core is to predict the hp uh, hp or uh, google or apple stock price i mean hp so i keep saying hp and i model this on hp um so you create a model and then based on that model assess the scope to add more variables or change parameters to make it better okay so let's move forward now this is starting the process and this I borrowed off Pradeep. Um, so first is to get your data. 70% right? of your time is going to get that data ready for your model. And so the models that you teach are just they're with engines which will run. So you still have to feed in good amounts of data. And as you start doing it, you'll realize that how important it is to structure your data based on the model that you want to create. So you can have a model which can be done in multiple ways, but you also need to customize your data to fit that. Then you have your training and testing. You split your data set into training and testing. How you want to split it again depends on your model. Like typically in most cases it's random, 
But in stock prices, you don't want it to be random. So you, for me, my training, I took up to 2008, 2014, I'll train. And then I'll use it on 2015 and 16. So you guys need to think of how you'll want to train and test your data. As well. And the last one is improve. So this is the part that, this is what I learned here. Right? The improve portion, apart from the basics of training and testing. The improve portion is here. You will now feed your model and you will now have to understand what your algorithm and your model can do. And what are the each model has a set of parameters that you want to feed in um, different things. And we walk through each one of them uh, briefly, but you need to figure out what best to search, how best to go about this program. So let's look at, so if you look at it, it looks pretty simple, right? I have the date on the left. I want to look at how I'm going to close in a particular, uh, in a particular day. So now if you want to run this by, if you want to use a deep learning, if you want to use one of these bigger models like linear regression or one of those, this is actually a pretty simple set. I can run a graph and I can just find out how it's going. Right? But then how far can the graph see? So you want to feed it that amount of information for it to see forward, right? So then if you're looking at this, it's going to look one day behind. It's going to just look at the trend. So the trend starts going down, starts going down. So how can it predict an up and down? So uh, things of that nature. So what? So this is where you try to figure out how you want to play with your data and structure it. And you have different options. Here what I did was, I took uh, something, I created something called a look back option, where I started clustering 15 days. So if I was looking at today's stock, I cluster the last 15 days stock. So based on that, I predict today's stock. And then, then yeah, then we, as we go forward. So I, this is my basic structure. So this is what it looks like. So on your left is your, um, now I just filtered it now. So if you look at it, I moved from a whole bunch of columns. I decided I want to only look at date. I want to look at close. So nothing else is really going to matter to me. The symbol column is a alpha numerical column. All modeling cannot feed it. It has to be a number base. So here I'm going to go by a company. So I'll choose one company and I'll, and I'll use the data for that one company. So date on your left is date and stock price, right? Assuming it's going one, two, three, four, five, six. And on your right, what I started doing was, so I look at the 16th day, which is assuming be $16, and then I look back 15. And then I'll keep progressing this over and over and over again. So I'm building a longer uh, stream, right? A longer chain of uh, prediction variables for it to review. So I'm going to go to the deep learning approach first that we did. So you all also go to it. So you have the deep learning concepts, our CNN and RNN. That's convoluted neural network and rectal neural network. So I use rectal neural network. CNN is mostly largely used for images, 2D, 3D. That's when it's really going to work. So RNN is more for one-dimensional data driven. And if you look at under RNN, there's something called RNN plus long short-term memory. Right? That's what I would want to do because I don't want to just look at 15 days. I also want to keep going back and looking at 15, 15, 15, 15, and see how this data flows. And then the tools that I use, and you learn all of this, is Tensor Keras is what we work on. You can either do this on your uh, computer or you can do this in Google Colab. Uh, we have GPU and TPU usage over there. So you can try both. I tried both. Um, because the, the Colab gives you only 12 hours of free time, so you run a code, you'll have to stop in 12 hours. So I did this on my system. Again, I did a very small piece. Um, so let's just look at how it works, right? So on your left is my input layer. So this is an RNN, what I'm going to show you. So it's going to go back and forth and try and assess each item. So input layer, then you have your hidden layer one and two, which is nothing but how you want to build your model, how dense you want to build your model and how you want to get your output. So it'll start picking up from each item, then more, 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 and then get your output layer. But it doesn't stop there. Now it says, okay, since I chose that LSTM model, say so let's go back and Again, reassess to see if my prediction will be right, if I can start looking at previous data as well. Right? So it's, it's, it's a really deep uh, network. So once you're done with that, you come down to your model. So I choose HP Inc, which is my company, and I try to run it. The blue on top, which you see, is the actual data set. The whole data set from 2010 to 2016. Okay? Orange that you see is my training. So I chose it up to 2014. And the green that you see is my prediction from 2015 to now, how am I able to predict data? 
So you can see the chaining. Um, you know, I've chosen RNN here. I use 15 days of look back. You can change all these variables, right? And then there's an optimizer with how you can fine tune it. You have different kinds of optimizers which you guys will learn about. And then you have a loss calculator, which is mean square error. Then what you see there is epoch and batch size. These are both one and one. That means I'm running this, I'm getting it to learn just once. So this training data, I'm letting it run only once. And the previous thing you saw, go, go forward and come back. I'm only doing that once, right? And so if you can see, the orange is, okay, it's forming a kind of a chain and it's, it's roughly following the direction of your stock in just one learning. Right? This is pretty good actually. So now let me change the epoch to five, right? Changing the uh, optimizer, the optimizer actually is not giving too much of an effect, but epoch is five times. So five times, you can just see that the orange portion is coming closer. There's, let's look again, with one, with five. Right? More crisper, and then you can see that the, the, the small jagged edges which start forming the green portion, which is the testing data. So it's not 100% yet. So, so then now this is at 500 epochs. So 100 times I made it do this. So you can see it's getting closer to that. Now this is one thing you you, you will start learning about is something called overfitting. Now if you train it too much on your training, it'll it'll stop forming a pattern and you'll just think that your training data is everything. So it'll start fitting everything exactly to how it is in your training data. And your test data is just going to go haywire, right? And after some time, it's not going to learn anymore. So this is 100. So typically 200 should have given me a really solid, you know, uh, testing data. There's more than 200. So it's really not much. So you've maxed out here, right? So this is, so all of these epochs, this 100, 200, there's no defined set for anything that you do. You will have to figure that out based on your model, based on how you set it up. Ideas can be got from the internet, but you will still have, this is the part that you need to understand what is, you know, what's going on in your model, right? So let's try this using machine learning. Okay, there's simpler models, um, and this is something which you guys are gonna go through. So let's look at machine learning. You have different sets in machine learning. This is really small, but this is the only way I can actually show you all the different things that we learned here. So let's look at, so this is what you guys are gonna be working on. So machine learning, you have supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised data. Um, you have regression and classification. Classification is showing yes or no, regression is actually giving you a value. So I have in this, I'm using supervised because it's supervised structured data. So to speak, yeah, I'm using regression, I'm using boosting, and I'm using linear regression. For this. The other things that you see there, KNN, random forest, they are non-parametric distance models. Here you're trying to just predict a value. Right? So these are everything that we covered in our, at least in our journey, right? Like, on, like in October, November. So it's, it's so like I said, it's huge, right? So when you choose your project, you want to make sure that it's aligned with what you want to be doing later. Right. So now with this, now there's a smaller project, let's add new dimension to it. I'm going to short, cut short my look back to this two days now. But what I lose, I'll add that stock index. The stock index is whether it's going up or down. So one means it's going up, zero means it's going down. So everything in machine learning has to be number based. Right? You can't have up, down, you need to convert everything to numbers. So with that, I run my linear regression. <laughs> So you can't even see the blue line. It's so fitted now. So Pradeep's already wondering how I got the test data to fit, uh, to fit the blue, right, in the, in the green. It's really not possible. But your data is saying that it's possible. It's saying that I've predicted exactly how it's going to be. So one thing to remember is in machine learning, it's studying patterns. So how I set this up, it's actually probably figured out that I'm using the previous day's code in my other column. So it's actually mapping that out and giving me a test result. So, so when you see your test data, and this is something that Pradeep always says, it's never be 100%. So it's going to be more or less like how you saw it in that RNA network where it's slightly off and down. So if you come on to this, you need to start rethinking uh, to see if your model is actually doing the way, uh, going the way it should. Try getting new test data and feeding it and run it again. Right? So this is, 
just how it works. And this is something called an XG boost. Uh, XG boost, uh, I've tried this without stock indices and with stock. So if you look at without stock, it's around 97% accuracy and with, it's around 98%. So I know that the stock indexes actually work, but this is more realistic. It's at 98%. It's not 100%. This also is quite high. Uh, but this is more of, um, you know, it gives you an, it, it runs some more algorithms inside to make sure that it, it pushes, it helps it learn faster your model. So there are different kinds of boosting techniques, that are boost, XG boost, um, and stuff. So what next? So on this model, now that I have my prediction built, I can use financial information to determine trend between companies. That means you have ratings, right? A, A, B. So use that to determine what's the relation between market price, uh, EPS, things like that. Then where I can use news headlines to predict the stock index. And it's possible this data set and solution is actually available online. So now I can just use that and plug it into my current uh, prediction thing. So that's pretty much it actually. So yeah, so like you said, it, like I said, it's, it's huge. So you, when you guys plan your uh, prediction project, you should have some use for it. Like the project, is there, like you need to plan it accordingly. Fantastic. Yeah. This one? Yeah, also. Huh. Yeah, see, um, this is for everybody's interest. It's actually good that you brought it up, you know, the clean data portion of the business, the entire data science business, constitutes in the industry more than 70 percent. So what I want to highlight was, you know, all of you are here to do the data science course, but what industry currently is offering is a lot of those. I think I wanted to reinforce or reemphasize the fact that you know, yes, all of you are doing a lot of things on modeling and training and stuff like that, but this portion is a very integral part of that. Right? So you don't end up thinking that you are going to do only the modeling part. Modeling part, once done, you're not going to take care of it on a daily basis. You need to run it on data, and only when it significantly changes, the data part change. Bulk of it comes back. And that's very hard part, actually. That's why people initially they are actually so much frustrated about it because they don't get answer. So it's like a very tedious process. But uh, if you've done that, thing, other thing is very easy. The main thing is taking data, and the industry never get clean data. So actually, it got very complicated. Everybody from initially they get some difficulty with the. Yeah, no, actually, we spent around uh, <coughs> 10 days on our project. Yeah. At around day six, we all had to restart. Mm -hmm. Because it's because how it is. Yeah, it's, it's the most important process that getting proper data and cleaning it according to our needs. That's the most important thing while doing <coughs> completing the project. And it's a combination. It, yeah. It's just nothing. Like yeah. you have, you know what uh, you have to do to train and test. That you are going to learn it, but cleaning data and getting the proper data is the main thing to learn. And that's where your actually the clean data portion is where your Python skills, as well as your, you know those concepts like the NumPy and pandas and stuff, will hit here, because you can't use one in isolation. Like you know, you can, the pandas is pretty much a data frame, right? It's your updated version of SQL, which kind of pumps up all your models. Mm -hmm. But you can't use it on standalone. Like there's a lot of Python coding that you have learned, you will learn, which is used there. You will have a lot of loop data, a lot of cleaning up over there. That's pretty much, you know, one is just cleaning the data and getting everything there. The second is, how do you want to use it? You'll have to decide at this stage. So if you mess up here, you'll go all the way to the end and you'll come back here. Yeah. So Sundar, you talked about using this project yeah. in your job in the future. Right. Uh, so clearly, stock price is one thing. Yeah. Way that you can predict your own company <laughs> stock price. Yeah. That obviously helps. Yeah. But what else are you thinking about? Yeah. So so one so like um, uh, Ravi said, right? 
we are, there's a lot of, I mean finance, there's a lot of uh, AI, which teams are calling AI. So it's not AI actually, right? If you think about it, they have some bots, this, so these are the things you learn. So we've got some bots, we've got some uh, programs running, we're improving things. But what they're really doing, there's, there's a difference between process efficiency and AI, data science modeling. So I don't think anyone's really, uh, they were scratching the surface on that data science uh, part. Now everyone's trading, uh, say like a chatbot, or what, yeah, it runs on some port behind it. But application in industry is more of, okay, I'm going to be, uh, you know, optimize and you know, create a lot of data, there's a lot of redundant steps, concise it, make it easier. That's really not uh, what the codes here are built for. The codes here are built for the next step. Right, so like now we are implementing uh, eight pieces of time blockchain in uh, um, a laptop. So any laptop from China, I can track it all the way to my to my distributor to my consumer, and then find out if someone is using my service care packs. So the model is shifting from you know like a transfer like one time buy to contractual. So everyone is now moving to contractual, right? So blockchain, if that if that comes out. It's going, I need to be able to track it at all this. So it, it removes uh, piracy, it removes all, you know, it removes a whole bunch of things, makes it easier for me. How do I track it? I give an RFID, I track its movement from one place to another place. So there are so many data points that it's going to flow through, so many different entities that it's going to flow through. So the ability to track that is a lot of data. So uh, at that point, you will need to start calling out and you know, setting up controls, different <laughs> things. So that's where, uh, you know, the, the last section of your coding is going to be really important. So it's, it's, it's like in the US now, the uh, uh, Walmart's using it to track their food yeah. right down from, from where they buy it to, to, to the farm in which it was grown. And then during the process of shipment, whether it was uh, stored in the right temperature so that food doesn't get spoiled. So it's, it's, it's a lot of data, right? So and that's just one company doing it. So I think the Japanese sushi market also. Yeah. Same thing. Using a combination of IoT devices. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's like you what blockchain is supposed to do, and something that we had some folks coming and talking to us uh, at our conference was it's going to eliminate the middleman, right? So it's it's going to aggregate, like how you have Uber now, which aggregates all your cats. You won't need an app like Uber. So if everyone's on that platform, you can directly relate and transact with people. Virtually, so it's pretty big actually. So, um, but now a lot of companies are just doing AI, but it's like improvement basic structures. I think the CA formulation uh, networks is working now because they're like converting like invoices, PDF, picture, yeah, so that kind of image. from image to how, how do I account for it? Am I doing some check? Things of that nature is where we are now, but it's like a long way to go. I think. Just one other thought I wanted to share and probably open it up to discussion. Uh, a lot of stuff, time is getting spent in the clean data phase right now, probably because of, you know, using legacy systems, you know, systems which don't capture all the data points mm -hmm. relevant to the data science exercise, which is mm -hmm. a relatively new uh, you know, driving your business. Hopefully in future, like as what uh, was saying, is building an application, they're building a blockchain application. Where they know they're going to put an AI and data science on top of it, maybe you might have a better exercise in capturing all the data points. So I'm not saying that exercise is going to go down, but you probably have a better handle. That's my thought. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of scope for, for it. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Like, do you have any something? Project or your own. So you're going to master the whole thing. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I now remember only what I used on my project. Anything else, I relearned that decision tree, land for the yeah, okay, I can understand it. But now uh, I'm like, okay, what, what do they mean? So now what I do is I go back to Google, I'm being honest. and But I'm able to understand now. Like, it refreshes my mind. If I went alone, I would not have known. So with this, a lot of things will go online. It's not like you'll come out of this and be able to code this by yourself. There's a lot of uh, data that you guys will be working on, uh, which will like really shock you. So even if I look at it, like for what is with the news, right? Just think about all the news headlines that are going to scrape off the net. 
is huge. And then how to convert that into, how, how do you train it to understand if, yeah. if a stock price is going up or down based on that news? Then it's going to look at each word. Then it's going to say one word is not going to matter. It has to look at three sentences. Yeah. So then it's got to, the combination, combinations will just keep going up for one small data. So it's uh, quite huge. The clean data is, like you said, is where everyone is. The market's now at clean data. They've not yet explored the data science push. A few companies are doing it, but they specialize in data science. But then also they have to spend 70% of whatever time given the cleaning data on you. Only 30% time to come the training, testing, and improvement the model. This is, you cannot, at this time, you cannot tell. Maybe future, some company totally gives some model. But new data generated, that data also going to generate random data. So you cannot monitor how the data is going to be generated. Yeah, so you have to be ready with uh, whatever uh, data you're getting, how to handle that data. This is inevitable. But we all move like Ravi said, we all move to a point where we're yeah. capturing every data. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not possible. Did you have this project in mind before no. you started? No. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. You don't have any coding. Yeah, I didn't have any coding. No, no, uh, no. because there's so, so Kadi gives you a couple of options okay. that you can choose from. And then there's, like I said, Kaggle. You mm -hmm. go to Kaggle and you search for what really interests you, the data that you want to. You kind of if you work on one number-based uh, deep learning concept, you can apply that with anything. Yeah. Right. So it's like again, the models on your right are created. Yeah. Your data is in one stuff, one particular format. You need to get into a format that your model can understand. Yeah. That yeah. is the challenge. You, you can get any model from internet, but the data is the main thing. And uh, about that uh, news thing, like how did you approach that? Uh, like you searched for the phrases on over the internet, is it? So, so the thing is, there's already uh, predefined weights. So the science weights for each word, yeah, right? right? So you can you can run. So yeah, I, I can choose to run it like from scratch. Uh, codes for that where it'll start uh, taking the whole uh, all the news words that you have, okay. Okay. and then it'll start mapping it together and it'll predict if I'm saying it's going to go up. Yeah. Then it will match all of that to, okay, it had all these combinations that went up. Mm -hmm. Next, it had all these combinations that went down. So, and then you feed it some 20,000 or... Okay. So, we learned that yeah. um, before that, uh, whatever, there, was, there was a change around this day particularly. Yeah. So, before that day, what kind of news were happening and it learned on, based on that. Correct, yeah. It learned by itself. So, and then if you make, you instead you say, don't just use one word, use three words. Yeah. Then, it, and so having, say you had one lakh words, then that's three into one lakh. So, that's like, it just keeps, and then it keeps going from there, right? So How much time did, did this take, like, uh, after building the model and uh, actually doing the analysis? And the, the building the model, getting my data ready, with trial and error, took around uh, six weeks, uh, six days, failed. Then restarted, then took me three days to get the data. The the rest took me, I think, four hours. So once you have the data and the model works, then you're just tuning to see how it works. So everything is, uh, again, so Python has evolved, right? So it's become more user friendly now. So I mean, I can say that because I really didn't have any previous knowledge. So it's really user friendly. So if you keep this running now, so it should predict the models. <laughs> I'll let you know. He's starting a hedge fund. Yeah. <laughs> See my new newspapers. <laughs> 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 I want to check my one Focus on that. No worries. Yeah. Just to add to what you were saying, a lot of finance companies uh, are using these kind of models. Right? So 70% of the volume on the NYSE is by computer and yeah. trading. So that's all based on this. So you have a basic structure for your algorithm and how you want to build it is up to you. So that's where you add your your notes, your weightage. Okay, no doubts. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Stop recording, yeah, stop reading, stop recording, yeah, yeah.